rather tell people what you're going to do, just show them. Like, that's always been my biggest thing. Just, you know, focus on your thing and just show people. He's an indie folk artist from Sydney, Australia. He started off this year with his debut album and a national tour. You may know him from his song, Homeboy. Please welcome Ollie Sherman to the podcast. How are you doing today? I'm good, man. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no problem. First question, just sort of to get into things. What was your first experience with music like or what made you want to get into a music career? Um, I guess I, guess I kind of uh, did music all through school um a long time ago and yeah I, it was kind of something that I didn't think I was going to do it was just kind of like one of those hobbies um one of those outlets and I think up up until god maybe when I was like 15 or 16 I kind of started getting a few people saying like oh you're like you're not that bad so it kind of just evolved from there and I kind of just put um all my free time into it and um yeah i just started writing a bunch of songs um started meeting a lot of a lot of musicians and stuff like that um which is really cool and it kind of just like snowballed in um a really cool way and um yeah i think i think that's the thing with my music that it there's been no real plan um it's just kind of you know, and month after month, flow. year after year. Yeah, and then I, that's kind of the way I live my life per se. But, but um, yeah, it, it, I think in terms of music, that's just kind of the way I've done things. And, it, and it's just, yeah, that way it just kind of grows organically, really. Yeah. So it, it seems like you started pretty young. Was there ever anything else you thought of doing or was it sort of just music from, from the start? Um, yeah, I mean, I... I guess I started playing guitar and the rest of my family have kind of, you know, business-based, like, numbers. Um, so that was a kind of – it was a different route to go down in terms of, you know, what I was used to. So yeah. in that sense, when I had when I had that in my head and I was living through that, you know, music was – it was always there, but it wasn't like, oh, you know, I'll never actually do it just because it's, you know, wasn't viable. But then, like, I, I guess, as I was saying before, like, it started snowballing and stuff like that. Then then that actual realisation comes in that it might be a possibility. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I guess I was always pretty open to what I wanted to do. There was nothing really certain yeah. I wanted to well, do. Yeah, so what was that sort of moment like to you when you were like, oh, this is like something I could do for a career, you know, for going forward? Yeah, um, yeah, it was just fun. Like, I couldn't believe it. it was kind of like one of those things you could do. Um, and, you know, it was fun. It didn't really seem like work. And it still, sometimes it does now, um, but most of the time it just doesn't, you know, just because I kind of lived through it. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's just one of those. It's just one of those cool things, I guess. I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm lucky that I get to do that. But. Yeah, yeah. So, what sort of you know for maybe other artists who just you know recently discovered like, hey, this is what I want to do. I'm trying to grow, get my name out there. What tips or advice would you give to other artists just starting? Yeah, um, I think the best thing to take into it is that there's like. You know, of course, there's things you can do and things you can't do with with music and and the career. But starting out, man, there's there's no rule book. Like, I guess when I was doing music um, at the start, um, you kind of just go off. Obviously, your influence is what they're doing, but then like the people you meet, you go off what they're doing, and you hear about other other things that other people are doing. There's no real you know, there's not like a, 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 you know, you can't tick things off that you've done. It's just kind of everyone's in their own, everyone's in their own journey. And that, that, that's so corny to say, but it's legitimately true. Like everyone's kind of doing their own things. And then when you're talking about music, um, 
you've just like yeah you've just got to take it as it comes especially if you're a new artist there's I don't think there's anything you know you can do that's wrong it's all about just kind of growing your own craft um and then people will notice because you're so passionate about it and you know they can see it and they can hear it um I guess rather rather tell people what you're going to do just just show them like that's always been my biggest thing just you know focus on your thing and just show people yeah yeah so when you sort of you know started releasing music you know and you finally got the chance to perform live what was that first live show like were you nervous at all excited what was that like i mean i was excited about the idea of playing but then when actually playing my first geeks i would have been so young i was so scared just because i didn't you know i think and that's the thing i mean most artists probably go through it but i was just scared of what other people would think and it sounds so silly because when you're a new musician and you're about to play a gig you just assume that everyone in the room knows more than you because this is this is the first time you're doing it so yeah. i think i was scared and there's been gigs i've played i remember the first gig i played with my band that still play with me today or well, half of them did um and there's like a there was a song that i started playing and i was just in the completely wrong key and we had to stop and go like it's just that kind of stuff happens but yeah. um and obviously like you know i didn't didn't sleep much that night but it was one of it was just one of those things um now when it comes to a gig it's it's kind of like all right we know what we need to do it's all about kind of how do we get the best out of my songs to the people that we're playing to and then i think that then it was more just like whoa like a show like i'm like doing this it's so wild so i, I don't know if that yeah. makes sense but it's just yeah it was it was more just being exposed to it but you're just chucked in to do a gig. Yeah. And as I said before, there's no, no one really teaches you, like you can be taught like, you know, oh, breathe and you won't be as nervous, like all that stuff. But I don't think anything actually teaches you what it feels like um, in that way. Yeah. Yeah. And so I guess now like pretty, it's not so recent, but you sort of started off this year with a tour going all over Australia. What was that like going from, you know, being in the wrong key for a show to having you know the opportunity to go on tour and travel all around your country yeah it was um i mean in hindsight it was it's one of the best things i've ever done um but i do i did struggle touring um and the whole idea of touring for me i just assumed again because no one really tells you i mean people can tell you but once you're doing it, it's it's a completely different thing. But I I did struggle, man. It's like it was so long. Um and this was kind of a half of it was a solo tour as well. So I would just be in airports, in hotels by myself for a lot for a while. So you kind of do struggle a bit just because I don't know, I've, I guess I wasn't really used to that type of isolation. Yeah. Um but as I said, in hindsight, it was so good because it just teaches you to like charge through it. Um, it teaches you, you have to look after yourself. Um, and you, you know, you're still you on tour. So you have to do those things that make you, you, um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of the shows and, and, you know, musically it was, it was cool. It was cool to play in places I've never been before around the country. Uh, I still remember yeah. like, you know, such long drives and stuff like that super super sick so yeah I guess uh, yeah I'm always always grateful I got to do that um and hopefully I can keep doing it you know yeah are you a music artist trying to find a way to get your music on as many streaming platforms as possible then check out DistroKid DistroKid is a super user-friendly and super easy to use service that will make your music available in stores like Spotify Apple Music, iTunes, Amazon Music, YouTube, Snapchat, everything, everything you could imagine, it's available. People will even be able to add your songs into their Instagram stories. DistroKid helps you with the distribution, monetization, and promotion of all of your music. Use the link in the description of this video 
for 7% off any distro kit package you want. Pick from musician packages designed to help artists get their own music out there, or even get a label package where you can manage up to 100 artists from one profile. So that's more for like managers, labels, and you can also get the musician package that I mentioned earlier, which is more for artists, producers, things like that. And super easy, and you can get 7% off any package right now with the link in the description of this video. So once again, drilling for a way to get your music on as many streaming platforms as possible. I'm talking any platform you can think of. Get DistroKid and get 7% off right now with the link in the description back to the program. That tour was, you know, around the same time as your debut album, uh, Land of All Pretend. What sort of, you know, I know that has a very, you know, interesting concept. What was sort of your idea going into the album when you started making it? Yeah. Um, I didn't. So I planned to do just a lot of um, EPs and LPs like leading up to eventually what I wanted to do was an album. But at that stage, I was like, no, nah, an album is going to be way further down the track like it just wasn't something that was viable to me at the time but mm, yeah um i had such like a long list of tracks that i'd done and demos that i'd done that it kind of just fell into place um and what all the stuff i was going through whilst writing the whilst writing that music kind of just yeah it kind of fell into place as well so i guess the, the whole idea of the album um was being in a you know in a state of mind where you you pretend everything's good when you know it's it's not um and I don't mean that in like a really sad way it just yeah. means like um it's just kind of about most of the songs you know just kind of about being real with yourself where you're where you're at um especially and that, like that was so prevalent whilst I was touring and stuff like that it just um you know pretend like not pretending but realizing um what you want to be and what you eventually want to be musically but where you are at the present can be two different things and you kind of won't get to either one of them if you're not real with yourself so that was kind of the whole idea behind it um and yeah I get, yeah just one of those things that just kind of fell into place I hadn't planned to do like I'm gonna write an album it just kind of happened and then now that I've done it I've got a taste for it now I have them very keen to put another one out to be honest so yeah you're in the sort of get into the you know more albums more ideas more just creations um yeah for sure and so you know was there ever sort of a moment maybe it was on tour just another time that was sort of like yeah. especially hard on you or like made you sort of second guess if music was the right thing for you yeah I mean, you hear about that so much about people kind of like nearly quitting and stuff like that. Um, yeah. I had, I definitely have had moments in the tour and I still do today, like about, you know, just because there are so many hard parts of touring and playing music, but also so many, so many good things about it that, yeah, you, you, your mind does fluctuate a little bit between, mm -hmm. you know, what you expected. I, someone was telling me the other day, it's kind of, um, if you're, you know, if you've got a big show, say, at the end of the month, um, it's basically, you know, a month, what, 30 days. It's basically 29 days of unpaid work by yourself doing stuff for, for one night of paid work. <clears throat> and if you don't show up on that one night, then you don't get paid for the whole month, if that makes sense. So yeah. you, there are there are some times in those, you know, those days leading up to where you're just like, oh, like you're not getting the only output you're getting is from yourself and the work that you put for yourself rather than what someone's giving you. So, you know, contrast that to, you know, a day-to-day -day job. Um, it's different and it does become difficult. Uh, and yeah, and touring is just like that. You're just kind of getting through some stuff and there are, there are days when you kind of, well, for me, there were days where I'll just kind of be, just you know exhausted because you're like when you know when's that good thing going to come but then it does come yeah. and you're like oh it's all worth it so yeah it's just kind of 
yeah, it's just kind of like that mantra of like, you know, you just got to keep going. And it, that, it does sound corny, I know, but well, it, it hurts. Well, yeah, but it also shows that, you know, you sort of have, you know, it seems like a lot of perseverance. You're able to go through these, you know, maybe in these days of unpaid work, these harder times and make it through it, knowing that there's something good to come at the end. Did Did you sort of just find that on your own or is there someone close to you that sort of instilled that perseverance in you? Um, I, you know, I'm lucky to have lots of people around me that do believe in me and, um, you know, they, you know, they'll, they'll, you know, they'll tell you how well you're doing and stuff like that. But I do think that validation, I think it does come from you and it did come from myself just because I guess you kind of, if you're touring and stuff like that, and then you play like a crazy good show, and then you're like afterwards, all the, the you know the days up like leading after it, you're kind of you're kind of sitting with yourself, being like, oh wow, that was actually really cool. Like I actually, like, you know, I learned a lot about myself, and you know, I kind of let go a bit more on that show, and and then you realize that all of that was, you know, that's the work that you've done. That's not just like a random thing. So yeah, um, yeah. It, it is a bit of validation from yourself, um, from the work that you know you, that you've done or haven't done, you know. Um, but then also, yeah, I've been lucky enough. Like my band are amazing. Um, you know, the, my management team, my label, they're all they're all really positive and they're all really supportive for me. So, yeah, I think it's a bit of both. But again, like I think that just comes with the industry. Like you, you know, you'll get highs, you'll get wins, and you'll get losses. Mm. That are just normal, you know. Yeah, and so what what is it sort of like for you playing live with this supporting band and sort of trusting them with like you know your your songs and uh, having them help you put them into a live setting? Yeah, um, I was I was extremely lucky um, with my band. I met my drummer uh, Alec. Uh, I, I was playing a solo gig down in. Uh, capital camera and he was doing sound for it and then we kind of just clicked and then the more I got to know him he I knew like you know he played drums he's an amazing drummer um he does his a solo project as well he introduced me to a couple more people uh who are now my band members today Kate you know Ben Mitch they, they're all amazing musicians in their own right amazing at what they do so when when I kind of came to them in our first geeks and stuff like that I'm giving them my songs that I've written in my bedroom and these guys are all like freaks at what they do. So it was kind of that, hey, guys, like you guys want to play like this four-chord song It kind of be- begin with that. And then I think the good thing and, and the reason why I say I'm lucky is because they they took that, you know, they, they take that and then they just make it amazing. They just kind of do what they do. Um, and I guess that's kind of the way I've always done it with the band, like, if I have new music for them or if we've got like a massive show coming up and I have to give them music, I give them like, you know, the basics of the basics of the song. So I'll write the song. I do all my own recording and stuff like that. I'll show them like the end or the demo or the end product. They go like, they listen to it and they go, yeah, that's sweet. Um, and then I kind of, I don't want to tell them what to do because I know yeah. they're so good in their own right. So if they get, you know, they, they know the song. They can play around with it. And it, I mean, we've been playing for the last four or five years, maybe longer than that now. And so each show, I, yeah, I, I don't trust anyone more than, they, than them in terms of music, man. They, they just, yeah. they do what they do. Um, and now you're kind of like, you know, waiting every gig to see what they can do with it. And it's really cool. It just, it transforms, you know, I, I think my music, um, recorded music is, is what it is and I love it. But then when we play live, it's always something different, which is why I love playing with them, just just because it keeps it interesting. Like I'll write, we'll write the set list, you know, the day of or, you know, hours before we play yeah. just because, you know, they've got it. So, yeah. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by W Energy. W Energy is an energy drink you mix at home from a tub. It helps you focus. It helps you concentrate. It helps you win. W is a lot like these other energy drink mix companies you see, but it's better. They have better flavors, they have better taste, they have better products. 
you can get Dragonade, you can get Galaxy Grenade, you can get Dub Sludge, and so many more great flavors like Beach and Peach. Once you have the powder to make one of these flavors, you can also get one of W's own shaker cups to make your drinks at home. If energy drinks aren't your thing, no worries. You can get products like stickers and clothing that look awesome. If you just want to try out W, you can go ahead and get one of their starter packs. It comes with a shaker cup and three flavors. On top of that, any products you get on any order from W, you can save 10% by using my discount code HEROIC. That's just my name, HEROIC, in all caps. One more time, that's code HEROIC at W.GG for 10% off any order. Go focus, go concentrate, go in, be better, W. You know, you see now a lot of artists sort of getting bigger, growing their following from having a social presence, you know, Instagram, TikTok, being on social media online. Do you think that's sort of a good thing that artists can sort of grow and get their music out there? Or do you think it sort of can distract people from, you know, actually making the music and, you know, the main thing of what they do? Yeah, um, it's, a, it's a really good question just because I think, I mean, if you're talking at it from a, you know, a company perspective, so like TikTok and Instagram and stuff like that, these, these are like massive companies um, and they've got these avenues which, you know, musicians and, and creatives are using which is amazing. They, they, you know, they can use it and there's like a, there's a section, you know, where they can express themselves and like use it. And then, you know, if you, if you play that game, if you play that algorithm, you know, you can do really well because, you know, it allows more people to see you yeah. and what you're doing, which is, you know, I think that's a really, really cool thing. I think the part where it might become detrimental and especially to me is that if you're always thinking about content. Um, and you're always thinking about, you know, what to post and whether your post doesn't do so well and or if a post does really well, you get hyped and, like, uh, it's exhausting. It makes me, like, yeah. it honestly makes me hate it sometimes. Like, I don't think – I started using TikTok um, a little bit ago and then tried to put some of my stuff up there, but then I just – it's exhausting. It took it yeah. took my mind away from what I thought was important. I know that, that sounds like really – corny again but I just yeah I mean I think I think my advice would be and I'm not saying this because I'm like really successful in any of those apps or anything but I think my advice would be to like use the apps for you don't let the apps use you if that makes sense yeah Um, yeah no definitely makes sense um it's sort of like use them how you see fit or like what feels right to you rather than sort of abiding by the algorithm like oh i got it you know it's another day i gotta yeah, i gotta 100%. post every day you know to get boosted yeah. like just take it at your own pace do what feels right yeah. what feels comfortable yeah 100 um, and so if you sort of get more time to focus on music your creative process what exactly does that look like how do you come up with a song does it sort of is it different every song or have you sort of like you know found a formula to come up with a new song uh, my, my songwriting process has probably been very consistent throughout my mm-hmm. career um I just got really used to like writing like a lot and recording a lot like so I would have like you know like hard drives full of music and stuff like that but uh in the last maybe like a year um it's been a little bit different like I've you know, I kind of, I do pride myself a little bit on like my production and growing my production skills and stuff like that. So I love, love the idea of sampling at the moment and mixing around and then incorporating my things into it. But I think, I think overall the writing process changes and it did change with me just because of what I was listening to. So, you know, I grew up on like, man, I loved folk music. I thought it was like, you know, and I still do. I I still love some folk stuff but I I think it's some of it's like the coolest thing ever how like you know it's just that stuff you can listen to and it it makes you feel safe and it like it's so raw and stuff like that um but then like now I'm I I love listening to like a lot of R&B and then now I'm listening to like you know 
disco and house music and I just love that kind of just that kind of uh I don't want to say like you know energy but that kind of that kind of thing that you know drives people yeah. and it's it's through all those genres so um yeah my songwriting's changed but only I, I would say because of the music I was listening to and um yeah if that makes any sense at all yeah and, I think and, it's more yeah and and so listening to these different genres um have you started to you know think about maybe trying out a song in those genres trying to you know fuse that genre with the sort of indie folk thing you have going on um I guess yeah have you gone you know any further with trying to make any of your own music in these different genres I mean I've tried for sure I think um again I try not to like so I'm going to make a song like this. I'm going to yeah. just do me and then see what happens, obviously. Um, I In lockdown, I uh, my partner, it looks like she's very into DJing and stuff like that. So I also kind of got into it and um, I created like a little side project, which is like some like jazz house. So um, I was doing that stuff I was making that stuff and that was like a nice little gateway for my music but I have incorporated and or at least tried to do some of the you know the 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 beats and stuff like that in my music um but I just find it interesting and I just find it fun um I think there's a there's obviously a different um you know sense of musicality when you know either if I'm singing and playing my guitar you know and people are listening or if I'm like, you know, if I'm making a cool beat and people go, well, they just listen to it in a different way. And if you kind of try and combine the two, maybe it works, but I think I'm just kind of dabbling in it at the moment, but yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah. And, and so when, you know, when you release a song, do you sort of, or an album, do you release it, you know, just trying to not have any, expectations or do you I, I guess just have you ever found that you you know release something and it performed you know a little better or a little worse than you sort of thought it that it would yeah I mean I think that's probably I think that's like one of the the, the main killers like expectation like yeah when I when I when I first released my first song like ages ago I obviously didn't think anything of it just because I was like this is me, whatever, put it out there, put it online. And then that kind of started getting traction. And that obviously got me hyped and go, oh, this is like, this is the norm. And like, you know, I was young, dumb. Obviously realise, you know, that sometimes that happens, sometimes that doesn't. Um, nowadays, if I release something, yeah, I, you know, try not to have high expectations. But I think, Matt, I just, just kind of been going off the, if my own music gives me goosebumps like if I can listen to it and go like oh that's that's sick like I, I like that then like man I don't really care how it goes at the end of the day it's yeah. too stressful to think like how you think it might go or what because then you're just worrying about what other people kind of think about it and like man if I get to you know show my music to my friends and they're vibing it that's that's like the best thing I feel like that's the best thing like yeah yeah, but I mean, as long as you know you're you're liking it, it's still you, and you know people close to you like it. That's all you really need. And it, I mean, the yeah. fans, other other you know public people liking it, sure, great. But mm. at the end of the day, it's not you know the yeah. most important. And I, thing. I I say that that like I say that not saying that like I don't care about what my fans think or anything. Yeah, like that. yeah. that's not what I mean. Yeah. I just mean like you know I'm I'm so grateful that they like me and what I do but when I'm releasing a song yeah it definitely just you've just got to like release it and see what happens yeah. um yeah yeah and do you sort of think that there's a song of you that sort of has like a sort of like this is Ollie Sherman vibe or like a song that sort of shows who you are as an artist and what your sound is yeah um to be honest, I I don't think I do. It, only yeah. because the songs that have done well, I really cannot even remember writing it 
you know, I can't really remember. Like I can remember, obviously I remember writing it, yeah. but I don't remember like it just kind of happens, release it. It's doing like, you know, as you said, like Homeboy has done well over the last couple of years. And I think, um, like, I don't remember even being in the studio for that. It's just like, that was yeah. one of those songs that just kind of felt right. And like we released it and it's done well. And I go, oh, that's, that's sick. Um, yeah, I just, I mean, yeah, it's, it's weird to think about. I, I don't kind of think about it. In a, in a sense that like this is me because because as we were talking about my music's always kind of changing my like taste yeah. for other genres is always changing um and it is weird when someone goes like oh this this song sounds like you and then i listen to it and i go like what i nah man but, or or i'm like oh that's sick like that sounds yeah. like me yeah but like you know i don't even know what that means so <laughs> yeah yeah it's sort of always changing, you know, mm. and it's uh, a constantly changing thing. So um, I guess <laughs> if you sort of got like a magical opportunity to make a song with any artist in the world, who who would it be and why do you think that would be a good collaboration? Yeah, um, I think I've thought about this and I think I have to come from like two, two different angles. I think. Um, I think one angle would be <clears throat> who would I, who would I want to collaborate with um in terms of like who who would I vibe with as a person um and like whatever music came out of that would be cool like whatever like if I think that would be kind of like I think musically like I think having like a beer and, and a studio session with like John Mayer or someone like that would be yeah. would be awesome just because you'd be learning so much um and like you know if i could sing on something of his that would be really cool i think but in terms of like now and if i had to make a song or collaborate with someone i think um man there's so many artists out there at the moment um that i'd love to work with um god i've stuffed my head maybe like maybe like a tom mish vibe would be really cool he just sounds like he's a cool guy um, and, and a, lot of, a lot of people like that. Um, yeah, that's hard. I don't know. Yeah. And I also don't yeah. know what type of music it would sound like. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And so do you have any sort of like bucket list or like dream venue that you have that you really want to play or eventually get a live show at one day? Yeah, I mean, I've always... Ever since I was little, I've always wanted to play um, at a theatre called the Enmore Theatre, which is in which is in Sydney. That's every gig I've seen. That's amazing. It's like this little. Um, it's not little. I, I don't know. Maybe I think it's like five thousand people, and it's just like this old style theatre, and the floor is like angled, so you know everyone's kind of got a view, and it's just mm -hmm. a cool, really cool room. I've always wanted to play there. Um, maybe one day, um, but I guess. And it like you know, any kind of massive festival bill overseas would be sick. Um, I also like I'm obsessed with Red Rocks. Any gig there is, just looks mm -hmm. awesome. That amphitheater is mad. So like, um, I saw last night. Maybe it was last night or yes, it, like the War on Drugs played there, and I love that band. So like that would yeah. that's also a collab. That would be cool. That would be cool. Yeah. Band, yeah. But yeah, the amphitheater, Red Rocks amphitheater would be mad. But Man, there's so many places which I probably don't even know of that would be yeah. sick. I think it's just kind of whatever happens. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever opportunities present themselves, you'll sort of, you know, sure. try to take and uh, enjoy. And I guess, you know, from the music that you've released, is there any song that you sort of feel a special connection with or a song that maybe is your favorite that you've released so far? Yeah. Um I I really like there's a couple of songs I really like. Um I mean I like all of them. Um, you know, in a non egotistical way. I really like the song Madness only because I feel like that that was one of the songs that came really quickly. I just I remember writing that and it just kinda of came quickly. 
there's another song I wrote called Noir and that was that was funny so I had I had this song called Noir written um, and recorded and everything it was it's like about a maybe like a six minute song so it's not it's not too short yeah and I had it ready to go bringing in I was going to get it mixed the next day it's going to get like a second opinion and I had it ready to go but I remember jumping in the studio one day and it uh I just couldn't find the file anywhere like it, it just kind of one of those things where you like unplug it unplug your USB or hard drive and it just kind of goes it was just yeah. one of those crazy things and I was like panicking but I knew the song so well because I'd done it so I just remember I, I remember I was at um university at the time I remember just coming home and just writing the whole thing again in one night and recording it and doing everything I remember remember that so clearly but also because I was doing that I kind of changed a lot of things so that noir that is out wasn't actually the original but I love that song just because that was one of the songs I had like I knew what I wanted it to be like yeah and yeah. so that way, like it was deleted, and I was panicking. But I was like, "No, nah, wait! Like I can just like I can just bust this out." You, you had a like, clear enough idea oh, cool. that you could do it again and still keep, you know, the core yeah. of the song. The same. Yeah, rather than you know, rather than oh, let's see where this song goes. I was like, "No, nah, like this is the vibe I want." And yeah. like it took me like a night, and that was the quickest I'd ever done like a you know a full song. Um, so I love that song just because of that. I think that's really sick. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, those are all the questions I had for you today. Thank you so much for coming on. Where can people find you online, your music, anything you got going on? Feel free to promote it. Let people know where they can find you. Yeah, um, Ollie Sherman, anything on the socials, um, all those, all those, you know, all those streaming services. Um, I've got, got a new song coming out in two weeks, so stay tuned for that. Um, uh, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully I can get overseas next year, you know, so we'll see. Yeah, yeah. Well, but thank you so much for having me, yeah. Yeah, no problem. And I'll definitely keep an eye out for that song coming in soon. Yes, man.